Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Pimax 8KX VR 2.0. No, but seriously, on a more informative tone, this headset is incredible. Um, comparing this to the Pimax 5K Plus that I currently own, the rubberized housing making it feel a lot more sleek is actually very, very protective on the headset. I've been using this for about 120 hours, and I have occasionally hit the sides of the headset either if I'm boxing or throwing a grenade or reloading too fast um, and still this headset has not showed any signs of faults or cracks or scratches in this the build quality is incredible the audio strap uh, it, it's the off-ear kind much like the oculus quest um, not, not a fan of it it's it's not that good and as you clearly see I have made some modifications to this headset making the audio quality far more superior to the off-air brand and having a similar if not the exact quality as the oculus rift cv1 even with the flip up and down earphones you can simply just uh, clip these on and you're all set but if you have a lot of hair like i do my afro had made it so that the earpiece wouldn't lay next to my ear but once you're dialed in the bass the treble the audio the loudness a huge improvement over the off-ear audio now with some electrical tape and sticky velcro i have rearranged the cables for a better cable management solution that will help improve the cable's length and durability because having it in that tiny slot in the back of the headset had caused my cables to have a few dents and curls in it. The loose connector for the off-air audio I tucked neatly behind the foam of the head strap. Lastly, the number one cause for the quote-unquote white sparkle that people experience a lot in uh, VR headsets is the dents and twist in the cable. With the braided sleeve here, you can use this to further prevent this from happening. Uh, this one's a little bit more optional, but if you have a large nose like myself and you sweat a lot playing VR, then you most certainly want to cover up this USB port with a tiny plug here. The link to the items are in the description below. This is a must-have if you own any Pimax headset. This tool provides access to all your games where you can modify them to your liking. Also, it is recommended to apply the max recommended resolution to 16384 with advanced super sample filtering set to false if you want the true 4K experience. GPU values can also be increased to push out just a little more performance from your GPU. Over here you'll find the quick settings where you can find the FOV, the quality, and amongst other VR settings. I do recommend keeping the brightness and contrast to the what I have on screen right now. Um, next we have the profiles and I shall give you an example here of how to modify a game, for example, Island 359. Go ahead and load this profile here. Here you can see all the options for the quick settings and what el whatever else you need to adjust the performance to get the game running smoothly. There is a upscaler mode where you can um, upscale to 4K and increase the 75 hertz to 114. However, I didn't buy this headset to upscale to 4K. Therefore, we won't be speaking about the upscaler option. Now we're going to go into the next app, uh, Turn Signal. This one you'll use to help further prevent any damage to your cable because sometimes VR can be so immersive 
you lose track of what direction you're turning in and end up with a Twizzler for a cable. This is a, another issue that is pretty common in wide FOV headsets, not exclusive to Pimax. Um, this only affects games that aren't in Unreal, for example, Unity being the biggest one, and it's the object culling. I tip my hat to the man who created this, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's the developer of Disassembly VR. Um, he has found a way to modify the FOV so that the um, that, so that Unity will actually detect that it is a wide FOV headset and prevent this obnoxious culling that I see in so many Unity games. So I've already downloaded the prerequisites for the files and organized them in this folder so that I can extract them and place them in the desired Unity game that requires fixing. Just to save you the trouble, I've already found the right DLL for Phasmophobia VR, and all you have to do is copy that DLL and simply place it in the mods folder. Once you have done that, and you have Melon Loader installed and all the prerequisites, just simply launch the game and see the results. And there you have it. Phasmophobia VR has now been fixed. Now there is no more issues with the culling, no matter what FOV you choose to use. This makes Unity games, for example, VRChat or Boneworks, 100% more playable with the increased performance of not using parallel reprojection. If you are a current 8KX user, then you know of these two known issues, if you will. The first is mentioning the, the heat right here on the upper left corner of the headset. It becomes noticeably hot right here just after about five minutes. As I've told you before, I spent 120 hours in this headset and I spent probably eight hour sessions each day playing this device and I haven't experienced anything overheating or graphical glitches so um, it's not really a problem and plus you're not going to get a third degree burn on here. It's just noticeably hot. The last thing mentioning is the uh, once you're inside the headset and you load up Steam VR, for example, because this is the only place I've really noticed it, and you shift your head around in a circle, you'll notice the ghosting on the letters. Um, that goes away after about 10 minutes, and if you're inside of a game already, you won't even really notice it. I thought at first it was an issue, but it, I don't know, maybe it's the headset warming up or something, but it's nothing permanent, rest assured. I think every 8K user is experiencing the same thing. Now, after roughly 120 hours using the 8KX and around 6,300 hours using Steam VR, I can confidently say, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Pimax 8KX VR 2.0.